One of the questions I get a lot in first aid classes is, could I get in trouble or could I get sued for providing first aid? And in general, that's not something that happens. However, there are a few things you need to consider when providing first aid. Now, all states have some version of Good Samaritan legislation. In Alabama, this primarily will protect uh, first responders, firefighters, police officers, medical personnel, and those in the military that are called up to assist during a disaster. And there's a few other little ones in there, um, but those are the, the, the big ones. Um, of all things, educators are uh, part of the Good Samaritan legislation and engineers that are assisting during an emergency are also covered by Good Samaritan legislation. But for the lay person, they are not covered by Good Samaritan legislation with the exception of CPR and use of an automated external defibrillator or AED. And I think we added that specifically for the AED because there was con some concerns that maybe if a school or a store or a mall got an AED and a layperson used it, could there be some uh, legal repercussions if something went wrong? And that is all covered by Good Samaritan legislation. Now, even though you may not be covered by Good Samaritan legislation, uh, there is something that you have to be con that you have to consider, and that is the standard of care. And the standard of care just means that you are going to provide care that a reasonably trained or per reasonable person would provide. Something that's just kind of common sense. And as long as you do what you learn in a first aid class, you should be fine with that. Now, if you look um, at the fine print on your CPR or first aid card, you'll notice that there is no certification or licensure for it. It just certifies that you completed a course on a specific date. And we did that because if you are certified or licensed as a first aid provider, that means that there is a standard of care that you have to maintain. So me as a paramedic, if I render care, I have to provide care that a paramedic would provide. And if I do not provide good quality paramedic care, then I could be sued. However, we want to encourage people to do uh, first aid and to render aid in, in emergency situations. So the Good Samaritan legislation covers those of us with medical licenses. As part of the Good Samaritan legislation though, to, to have it be applicable, I need to follow a few principles. And I think these are just good principles to follow even if you're not covered by Good Samaritan legislation because it'll help you out if there's ever a situation um, after the event. And one is receive no compensation. Should you get any money for or any compensation, no gift cards, no anything. Um, I was at a, a restaurant with actually a class of nursing students taking an advanced cardiac life support class and we had a person there choke and I jumped up and ran over and, and did the abdominal thrusts on him and got the object out of her mouth and, and she was fine and went back to eating and we went back to eating and the manager came over and said, we're going to pay for your lunch and, and I couldn't. Um, that would be receiving compensation for first aid that I provided. So I didn't get a free lunch that day, um, even though I was the one that, that did the abdominal thrust on her. Uh, now that may be taking it a little extreme, but just to be on the safe side, I'm like, don't, I was just glad to be able to help. The other thing is not to do anything that is not taught within your, your class or what we call the scope of practice. And that's kind of what you're legally allowed to do. Now again, in first aid, you're not licensed or certified, so there isn't a, an official definition of a scope of practice for you. As a paramedic, I have certain skills that I can perform and certain ones I cannot. Uh, but generally, don't do anything that you didn't learn in your first aid class. And the one that we always kind of joke about is if someone um, is choking and you try the abdominal thrust and it doesn't work, you get out your pocket knife and big pen or straw and cut open their throat to do a a cricothyrotomy and, and put the straw in their throat to try to get an airway for them. That's not what you're going to learn in first aid classes. So don't do that. Please don't do that. Don't, don't do that. Um, but that would be something outside your scope of practice. And the last thing is don't do anything what we call is grossly negligent or something that you know is wrong. So if someone's arm is broken, don't be like, does this hurt? Um, and see if that hurts. There's no reason to do that. It's just going to cause pain, can cause damage. Um, so we wouldn't do something like that. If someone's arm was broken, we'd tell them to keep it still and try to splint it in a uh, stable position. Uh, but there wasn't, wouldn't be anything that we would do that would be grossly negligent or outside what we would normally do to, to take care of someone. So again, even though Good Samaritan legislation doesn't really truly apply to first aid situations, if you're not licensed as a medical provider, just to kind of stay within the, the spirit of the law, don't get any compensation, don't do anything you didn't learn about in class, and don't do anything that you know is wrong to do to someone.
So hope that helps uh, alleviate some of your concerns about uh, being sued or legal repercussions for providing first aid. We want people to do first aid and help each other out. And as long as you follow those simple rules, you should be fine. So if you have any questions, please let me know in class or message me through the course management system and or down below in the comments. And I look forward to hearing your questions.